Well, good morning, Internet. It's a slightly murky Saturday morning in October, and uh, unusually for me, actually, I'm out for a ride with uh, another group of bikers. They're a couple of mates of mine from a forum, a non-bike-related forum that I'm on, and uh, a friend of one of those guys who I've not met before, and we're going... Uh, for a 50 or 60 mile ride out into Buckinghamshire and then hopefully we're going to stop off for some breakfast somewhere so we just set off just outside St Albans in Hertfordshire um, so I'm on my Thruxton R the guy at the front of the pack uh, Ian is on a BMW R90 Sport beautiful bike and of course I've only just traded my BMW R90 for the Thruxton. Behind him uh, is Mark on a Triumph Street Scrambler, the 900cc version. And just in front of me is Moo, and Moo is on the Street Twin, the sort of facelift uh, version uh, that came out a couple of years ago. So we have three Triumphs and a BMW. And we're already on a road which I'm 100% comfortable with because I've got uh, very road oriented tyres. Uh, but we're following a route that was set by Kalimoto and hopefully it won't take us on the super twisties which do tend to be a bit testing for a road bike at times. Uh, you can see here there's loads of mud and it's not ideal. So uh, let's see where this road takes us. That's better. I think it was the mud more than the road that was the issue then. So nice to be out with some other bikes and tomorrow uh, I'm out with Ian again, that's the guy in the R90 and another friend called Howard who has a CCM flat tracker, a limited edition one of one, it's a beautiful bike so I'll probably record that as well. up quite warm today because it's slightly chilly and I'm about to put my heated grips on in fact. So let's stuck them on high to begin with. Another bike, some cyclists. I guess there's not going to be many weekends between now and the end of the year when it's dry and kind of warm enough to go out and enjoy it. I know a lot of bikers will be putting their machines away for the, you know, for the rest of the winter, for the rest of the year and into the spring. That. that sounds so beautiful, this engine. It's been decatted and it has aftermarket end cans. 
and uh, they sound absolutely amazing. This is a nice windy route, certainly better than being on some dual carriageway somewhere. Um, Horses definitely don't like the motorbikes, that's for sure. Bless them. Can't say I blame them either. Quite like seeing a procession of bikes in front of me. Haven't been on a group ride for so long. It's definitely spitting a little bit because my advisor is now covered in water droplets. Can't go left.
following these roads after being stuck in traffic for a little while. But I'd rather they were dry so we could just take them a little bit quicker. Thank you. these guys back in front of me so I can get them on the footage for a little while and uh, we said I think there might be some kind of uh, road race going on here with these runners I'm not quite sure why there's so many of them however it's a beautiful area I think this might be Denham I'm not 100% sure and um, better roads I wasn't enjoying those the gravel on those um, twisties uh, up till now uh, so this is a bit more confidence inspiring in terms of staying upright which is what we all want to do yeah it's Denham lovely little town Anyone remember doing hill starts on their test? It seemed hard when we were learning, didn't it? <laughs> I guess everything seems harder when you're learning. The same applies to cars as well. It's brighter now, stopped, uh, stopped raining and the sun is just visible in a hazy kind of way through the clouds so hopefully it'll brighten up for the rest of the time we're, we're out and we'll be back home before it starts raining properly at around, well, allegedly around three o'clock. So that's looking better, the roads are quite dry now. A little bit more fun when you've got a slightly more sure surface to ride on. Nice bunch of bikes. I like being out with other Triumphs because I am a Triumph man at heart. Absolutely no question about that.
sure what that is on the right. Oh, it's a market. Bovingdon Market. Busy. So I guess it's a good market. But I don't really know this area. Certainly don't know Bovingdon. And I don't know Welpley Hill. That's interesting, the sign for Buckinghamshire, which is, for those of you not from this part of the world, is a county in uh, sort of southern, southeast England. Um, it said home of the, Par of the Paralympics. I don't quite know what that means. I should have to look that up on Google when I get back. There's no question this bike is most comfortable when you're traveling quicker and you have a bit of wind resistance holding the weight off your arms and also I guess going into a slight tug. It's not to say that it isn't comfortable other than that but it's most comfortable when that's the case. I also wish I put a slightly warmer jacket on actually talking of comfort because although this is a leather with a thermal lining. I put the thermal lining in a couple of weeks ago when it started getting chilly. Um, it's nowhere near as warm as my Brevet uh, textile jacket, which I have for full on winter. Um, and it's quite chilly actually. The wind has no warmth in it at all at the moment. Absolutely ecstatic that I had heated grips fitted uh, last week when the bike went in for service at the beginning of the week. The best 200 quid I could ever have spent. Well, I say 200, 205 plus 70 quid fitting. So they ain't cheap. Mark in front of me fitted his own about a week ago. Um, and he seems to think it went fairly smoothly. It took him a couple of hours, I think. But given the bike was going in for a service in any event, I thought, just let them do it, because I do have calamities when I do stuff myself, maintenance and DIY related stuff. And I certainly didn't want a calamity with my new bike. funny because uh, I was watching I was watching Mark cope with that the tightness of that turn and uh, I was just thinking this bike the Thruxton R uh, seems such an easy bike to maneuver uh, more so even than my street triple which was easy definitely easier than the R9T um, could be the easiest of the lot. It's set up so well. Um, yeah, that was very easy. That old adage, though, I remember when I was having my lessons uh, prior to my test years ago. Um, the adage of uh, looking at where you want to, to get, you know, point your head to where you want the bike to go. Oh my god, that's so true. I can't, still can't quite work out why. But it really is true. You look where you want to go, the bike will take you there. Um, it's easy when you're learning, when you first start riding, to, to look down at your front wheel thinking, oh, turn, you bastard. Uh, and that makes it harder. And also, of course, there's that old demon of target fixation. If you're not making a turn, 
and you're looking at where you think the bike is going to land you in trouble, then that's where you'll end up. Interesting bit of rubber on the road there, which just serves as a warning that this is a tight corner. Oh, we've been left a long way behind. Come on, Mark. Pull your finger out, mate. I did say that Ian likes to get a move on when there's a bit of road in front of him. Now that's helpful. If I actually make the turn it would be anyway. slowed down now for, for the back markers. Speen and Great Hampton, uh, neither of which heard of before. Again, I'm looking at Moo, who's not been biking for that long, and he's doing splendidly well. Clearly uh, not phased at all. By some slightly more difficult terrain.
this bike takes the bumps far more capably than the R9T did with its stock suspension which was pretty awful. Ian's upgraded his so he'll be okay up front there. Um, but the Olin suspension, the rear uh, shocks are fantastic. Absolutely no idea where we are. Hello. The village hall. Not so nice. Lovely, lovely route this is today. So nice to find some proper twisties and to be out with some other bikes to enjoy them. 